Hi, this is Scott Sischerer, Associate Editor of the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology, and I'm joined today with Dr. Corinne Keat from Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. She's Assistant Professor in the Department of Pediatrics Division of Allergy and Immunology. And Dr. Keat is a co-author on an article that was in, as a letter to the editor in JACI in September of 2013 entitled Long-Term Follow-Up of Oral Immunotherapy for Cow's Milk Allergy. Dr. Keat, thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So first question, in this letter to the editor, you're talking about longer-term follow-up from two of the milk oral immunotherapy studies that you did. Can you briefly mention about those two studies? Sure. The first one was a study uh, where kids were randomized to either placebo or OIT, oral immunotherapy, for milk allergy. And um, there were 20 kids in that study at Johns Hopkins and at Duke. The second study was a que asking the question of um, comparing sublingual immunotherapy to oral immunotherapy. And in that study, there were 30 kids. For the purposes of this paper, we only followed the patients up who had received oral immunotherapy at Johns Hopkins. So there were 32 kids. Great. And those articles are uh, available also in JCI. Now, what did you do for the follow-up? What were the methods? What was your approach? We brought them into the clinic for a structured questionnaire and skin and blood testing. If they weren't able to come into the clinic because they had moved away or something like that, we either um, administered the questionnaire on the phone or in cases where they had been lost to follow-up, um, we, we had clinical data for um, the rest of the patients. From Great. So people are very uh, anxious to know about what happens uh, after the studies are over and people have finished their oral immunotherapy. So what were the results? So I think um, if we ha could put up the table two on the video, I think it might be helpful. So we were somewhat surprised to find that um, of all the patients, only about 20% were uh, tolerating uh, milk without any symptoms. And we found that almost a third were having frequent or predictable symptoms that, that were beyond just mouth itch with the milk. We had 16% um, that had um, completely eliminated milk from their diet, and then another couple of patients who were only uh, consuming trace milk. Another uh, couple of things that were salient were that 19% um, had had anaphylaxis at least once in follow-up, and 9% of patients had used epinephrine at least once in follow-up. So I guess it's it's particularly worrisome. Uh, some of, some of these individuals, I guess, originally walked out of the study, and you were thinking that uh, you know they were just going to be drinking milk and eating ice cream and being fine. Right. Yeah. So it was that was uh, surprising to us because we'd expect that patients who were doing well at, when they left us would only continue to do even better as time went on, and we found so, that in fact some people were having uh, symptoms later on that they hadn't had earlier. So, what, you know, it sounds a little depressing. What does it tell us about the future of oral immunotherapy? Well, I think, you know, it does um, encourage us to be cautious about oral immunotherapy. I think we do need more studies about long-term outcomes and studies that compare people who are treated and people who are not treated long-term. It looks, from these results, which are, you know, only a small group, it seems that the long, even long-term, it may be that there are people having more symptoms than they would with avoidance. But on the other hand, this study wasn't meant to look at quality of life, and we know that some, a lot of these kids, um, even if they continue to have some symptoms, their um, other implications in their lives were more positive in terms of the social effects of being able to incorporate the food into their diet and the idea of having more control over their um, diet as well. But I do think we need to have really careful attention to risks and benefits uh, from oral immunotherapy when uh, we go forward. Those are great points. I guess this really is almost a literal is your cup half empty or half full with milk. Right. <laughs> in this case, you get, you get a little yes. bit of each. But, um, yes. but I totally uh, agree with a lot of your assessments on that, that this is something that um, you know, we really look, need to look like you did, uh, really almost for the first time, to look at the long term and see what it really means. Yeah. So I thank you very much for joining us for this. And I want to mention that Dr. Keat has seven articles published in Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology and another article in our sister journal, Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology in Practice, in just the last two years. So you're doing 
a tremendous amount of fantastic work, and I congratulate you on that. And uh, thank you for this very informative study and for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. I look forward to more studies like this. Thank you.